Derivative of logarithmic functions. To find the derivative of logarithmic functions, we use implicit differentiation. And like always, we are assuming that logarithmic functions are differentiable. And this is possible because logarithmic functions are the inverse functions of exponential functions, which are differentiable themselves. So letting x represent the independent variable and y represent the dependent variable and a representing the base of the logarithm, we can write the general form of a logarithmic function as follows. f of x equals log base a of x. We can rewrite the expression as y equals log base a of x. Now here, what we want to do is we want to exponentiate both sides of the equation. The right side of the equation signifies to x because the composition of a function and its inverse undo each other, leaving you with the independent variable. Now that we have an equation written implicitly, we use implicit differentiation to find the derivative. We first take the derivative of both sides. The derivative of the left side of the equation requires the use of the derivative rule we derived in our previous video, specifically the derivative of an exponential function. So applying the derivative of an exponential function along with the chain rule, the expression on the left hand side of the equation reduces to a raised to the power of y times the natural log of a times y prime. And the derivative of a power function of degree 1 is equal to 1. Now we solve for y prime. Doing so gives us the following expression. We want an expression in terms of x only. We need to substitute the dependent variable y with an expression in terms of x. So we use the original explicit function we started with. Substituting this expression and simplifying, we have that the final derivative is equal to 1 over x times the natural log of a. So we have that the derivative of a logarithmic function is equal to 1 over x times the natural log of a. So now check this out. If the base of the logarithm is equal to e, we would be dealing with the natural logarithm. So if we substitute the base with e, the derivative of a natural logarithm will be equal to 1 over x. As you can see, the derivative of a natural logarithm is relatively simple. And this is why you will encounter natural logarithms frequently in your study of calculus. Another variation of the natural logarithm that appears frequently in calculus is the natural logarithm of the absolute value of x. In order to find the derivative of this function, we need, to, we need to remember the definition of the absolute value. Recall that the absolute value function is defined as follows. The function will be equal to x when the values of x are positive, and it will be equal to negative x when the values of x are negative. In essence, we need to analyze the function by breaking it into two regions. Applying the definition of the absolute value to the natural logarithm, we have the following. So to find the derivative of the function, we need to take the derivative of the first region which is equal to 1 over x, and then we take the derivative of the second region, which requires the application of the chain rule. So it turns out that the derivative of the natural logarithm of negative x is equal to 1 over x. So regardless of what region we decide to focus, the derivative of the natural logarithm of the absolute value of x is just equal to 1 over x. So next time you see this function, don't panic. It's just equal to 1 over x. All right, let's go over some examples. Find a derivative of f of x equals the natural log of x cubed plus 7. Checking out the function, we see that it is formed by a composition of functions, where the outer function is the natural logarithm and the inner function is x cubed plus 7. This requires the application of the chain rule. So we find the derivative of the outer function and evaluate it at the inner function, and then multiply it by the, by the derivative of the inner function. To so find the expression, we have that the derivative of f of x is equal to 3x squared over x cubed plus 7. Let's try the next one. Find a derivative of g of theta equals the natural log of sine of theta. So here we also have a composition of functions where the outer function is equal to the natural log and the inner function is equal to sine of theta. So taking the derivative of the natural logarithm and evaluating it at sine of theta, we have the following, and multiplying that by the derivative of sine of theta. So the simplified expression we have that the derivative is equal to cosine of theta over sine of theta, which can be rewritten as cotangent of theta. All right, for the next one, let's switch the inner and outer functions and find its derivative. Find a derivative of h of x equals sine of the natural log of x. So once again, we have a composition of functions, but here the, the outer function is sine of x and the inner function is the natural log of x. Once again, we take the derivative of the outer function, which ends up being cosine of x, and we evaluate it at the natural log of x. And then we multiply that by the derivative of the natural log of x, which is equal to 1 over x. So we find an expression we have that the derivative is equal to cosine of the natural log of x over x, 
Let's write a function of a logarithm with a base other than e. Final derivative of h of x equals log base 3 of 5 minus 2x. So once again, we have a composition of functions. The outer function is log base of 3, and the inner function is 5 minus 2x. Taking the derivative of log base of 3, we have that it's equal to 1 over 5 minus 2x times the natural log of 3. And when we multiply the expression by the derivative of the inner function, we have that the final derivative is equal to negative 2 over the quantity 5 minus 2x times the natural log of 3. You will rarely be taking the derivatives of logarithms of a base other than e. But if you don't, don't panic. Make sure you include the natural logarithmic term into the derivative. Let's try the next example. Find the derivative of h of x equals the natural log of x squared plus 1 over x minus 1. So here once again, we have a composition of functions. The outer function is the natural log, and the inner function is the quantity x squared plus 1 over x minus 1. So applying the chain rule, we take the derivative of the outer function and evaluate it at the inner function. We have the following expression, and multiply that by the derivative of the inner function. The derivative of the inner function requires the application of the quotient rule. So applying the quotient rule, we have the following expression. To define expression, we have the following. We collect like terms in the numerator, which signifies to the following. And right here, we cancel out an x minus 1 term, which reduces to the following. And to define the expression, we have that the final derivative is equal to the quantity x squared minus 2x minus 1 over the quantity x squared plus 1 times the quantity x minus 1. Okay, now let's solve the same problem a different way. We are actually going to use the algebraic properties of logarithms to rewrite the function. Recall from your studies of algebra 2 that if we have a logarithm of a quotient, we can break it into a difference of logarithms. In other words, the natural log of x over y is equal to the natural log of x minus the natural log of y. So before we take a derivative, let's rewrite the expression as follows. We can rewrite the expression as the natural log of x squared plus 1 minus the natural log of x minus 1. So now that we have a difference of logarithms, we apply the difference rule and we take a derivative of each term. So taking the derivative of the first term, we have that it's going to be equal to 1 over x squared plus 1 times 2x minus the derivative of the natural log of x minus 1, which is equal to 1 over x minus 1 times 1. So in the final expression, we have that the final derivative is equal to the quantity 2x over x squared plus 1 minus the quantity 1 over x minus 1. The expression can be left as it is. But if you are not convinced that this is the same answer we got using a different method, I recommend that you algebraically manipulate the expression by using a common denominator. You will discover that you end up with the same answer. So it looks like you learned those algebraic properties of logarithms back in algebra 2 for a reason. We could use them to rewrite the logarithm into a sum and difference of logarithms, or into a product of two terms whenever possible to make the function easier to differentiate. Alright, let's try the next one. Find the derivative of g of x equals the natural log of the expression 2x plus 1 raised to the power of 2 times the expression 5x minus 3 raised to the power of 3. Once again, rewrite the logarithm using the direct properties of logarithms. So here we have a product of two terms, so we can rewrite the logarithm as a sum of logarithms. Doing so, we have the following. And so here we can use the property of logarithms to bring down the exponents, which gives us the following expression. And then now we can take a derivative of each term using the sum rule. Taking a derivative of the first term, we have that's going to be equal to 2 times the quantity 2 over 2x plus 1 plus 3 times the quantity 5 over 5x minus 3. To define the expression, we have that the final derivative is equal to the quantity 4 over 2x plus 1 plus the quantity 15 over 5x minus 3. Finding the common denominator and adding like terms, we write the expression as 50x plus 3 over 10x squared minus x minus 3. Either answer is acceptable. Okay, let's try the final example. Find the derivative of r of x equals the natural log of the absolute value of 3 minus 2x minus 5x to the power of 3. The derivative of a natural logarithm of the absolute value of x is just equal to 1 over x. So here we apply the chain rule, where the outer function is the natural logarithm, and the inner function is 3 minus 2x minus 5x cubed. So taking the derivative of the natural logarithm, evaluating it at the inner function, we have the expression 1 over 3 minus 2x minus 5x cubed times the derivative of the inner function. So taking the derivative of the inner function, we have the following expression. 
And the simplifying expression we have is that the final answer is equal to the quantity negative 2 minus 15x squared over 3 minus 2x minus 5x cubed. We could factor out a negative on the numerator and the denominator, and we could rewrite the, the final answer as 15x squared plus 2 over 5x cubed plus 2x minus 3. In our next video, we are going to exploit the algebraic properties of logarithms to rewrite complicated functions into a more manageable form to save precious time and effort.